Zero Zero. I'm your host, T Heel. So, I know I've been gone for a couple days, like almost a week now. I do apologize. Lots been going on, but I do have some stuff for you. First thing, boom. If you guys don't know what this is, this is a hop hog, hop hodge, whatever you want to call it. HD PVR means you're going to be getting video capture with gameplay, picture in picture. You've seen it before on other people's videos, but you're going to get it from me now. I want to drop some great, great full-on video walkthroughs of games. That's coming soon. I have to hook it up, and I'm probably going to wait for the next thing, which is my new 55-inch 3D LED 240Hz Samsung 8 million to 1 contrast ratio C8000 TV. This is a edge-lit TV. Beautiful. Typically retails around 3500 I got it for under two grand. Stoked. Can't wait to play all my games again. And 240 hertz, if you guys have been hearing hip hop, you already know it's going to make the game look way better. Make my little 37 inch look like a, a thing of the past. So can't wait to do a review of that. Can't wait to play the games again all over. So let's get into the review. And you know what it is? It's that Red Dead Redemption, Undead Nightmare. Graphically, well, let me just sort, set up a few things. One story. Your wife, your John Marston, this, I mean, if you know the Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption universe, you know you play as John Marston. Um, and this expansion, and this is the DLC uh, compilation disc, your wife and your son get bitten. They get possessed or zombified, as you want to call it. You're not sure if it's a plague, if it's a virus. You, you don't know what it is. Um, but they get uh, bitten. They turn into zombies, you hog tie their asses, you throw it, lock them up in your house, and you go right into town to figure out what's happening. Uh, you come soon to find out that many, many people, almost everybody is turning into a zombie, and very few survivors are around. You go from town to town, trying to free these towns, and figure out how to cure your family, and if you help everyone else out, that's cool. So, that being said, I don't want to ruin the story, but it is kind of like a B-rated zombie science flick for a westerner enjoyable has its laughs but it's more of a com comical type of storyline i think anyone can enjoy it. it's not overly like serious it doesn't take itself serious so don't think it's going to be like a resident evil where it's really got to pay attention to every fine detail it's not it's fun you'll enjoy it so art direction and the scope of this world beautiful set pieces there's plenty from valleys to mountains to snow to to like little crevices rolling hills with these sagebrush rolling through weather is perfect you get you'll get tons of volumetric lighting coming over a mountain that really just shadows everything in and you get this nice deep really moody atmosphere and it's gritty it just really is believable the way grass and brush and dust sway around and the way the trees pull in and the way that houses are and buildings are recreated and the universe is so immersive when the game is at its top 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 it's so immersive that you cannot believe you're playing a game but that being said now that you got the art direction out of it when the game is bottoming out it is bottoming out frame rate drops often enough where you're like okay almost slideshow view and texture pop-ins where whole environments load up in on you and the enemies could pop up out of nowhere because of the texture loader you can run up on a character too quick and notice that at one point they look like they're back in the PlayStation 1 era and then the next minute they're PlayStation 3 so that big of a difference like someone turned on a light so if that's gonna bug you you may not like this but it does happen enough it only takes you out of the immersion for bits and pieces at a time. I got through it. It didn't It didn't kill the experience. It just was something I paid attention to. So it has its great points. It has its bad points in the graphics. And the same thing with the controls. Um, good points. When you're doing things like uh, shooting with the, the dead eye, it is fun as hell. You can target. It really accents people slows down time for you to do what you need to do um, when you are throwing your rope and you want to capture somebody um, and hog tie their ass that works flawlessly so those are the pluses 
bad points with the controls are more there's more bad points in the controls than there are good points and i say that because when you try to go in a never narrow door it feels soapy like your character's like all lubed up and you're trying to slide along a wall and you can't get in a door so zombies are rushing at you and you're trying to go through a door so that way you can hurt them to, through a narrow pass you're better off just turning around and shooting those zombies don't even try to go through the door you will find yourself there aside from that just that one soapy mechanic the lock-on mechanism was not designed for the zombie pack. The zombie requires you to blow their noodles out. If you're not going to blow their noodles out, you best run. Because that's all. You can either hit them with fire, wait for them to run up on you, and then shoot them in the head. But if you're waiting for them, if you're trying to pick them off from a distance, you're going to end up using, staying away off, using the sniper rifle, or using your dead eye constantly, which feels like it, I wanted the dead eye to be more of like a last minute, like, Boom, this is pow, this is cool. Instead of, I have to rely on this because the targeting system locks on the torso instead of their head. And I can see how in the main game that would be great. In the zombie pack where you have to shoot everyone in their head, that it falls apart. Moving that, the reticule from their torso to their head, when they're running at you and there's multiples running at you, it sucks. It's too slow, it's too sloppy. You end up shooting over their shoulders or shooting them in their... Uh, in their shoulders or lower torso. They'll drop to the ground and then you gotta move and hit them in the head. So that you end up either using the dead eye a lot or waiting for them to run up on you and blowing out their heads or sniping them from a distance. Takes you out of the experience for the controls. I didn't care for that. It wasn't something I liked. Uh, personally, in the multiplayer experience, when I, can sh when I can just shoot you dead, popping your head, I mean headshots are great, but I could blow you away by killing you in this area, that was how it was designed and it worked great. So in the single player, not so great. Multiplayer, and I'm betting the retail version of the actual game would have worked flawlessly. Other things like riding the horse and getting off and then getting on and say if you, those little quests that are on the side and you say you see the little blue dot pop up and you try to go save somebody and they're getting rushed by lots of zombies. Getting off your gosh forsaken horse is it can't be sucky unless you're riding slow, and then it will let you get off. But if you're riding fast and you want to stop the horse or you just want to jump off, uh, that ain't happen. Where's the duck and roll? Like, <laughs> roll and roll and roll and get off and then start firing. No, no, uh, no, no. You got to curve the horse, and it's, you know, it's a horse. It's realistic in the fact that you can't just be like, turn left, punk, or turn right, or stop. That's not going to happen. Stop happens sometimes when you want, but it's not, like, accurate. So that sucks. Uh, there are so many different types of quests, and they're good and they're bad because a lot of them are either protect this person or hunt this down or save this town. I would have liked to see a little bit more variety, but the experiences during those and the like, the set pieces and the way you are set up in those scenarios are very which is great. You can always take a different perspective and a different approach to dealing with each one of those scenarios. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, but it is what it is. It's a DLC experience. Multiplayer, I love being able to do the, the Mexican standoff and you're, you're all lined up in a circle and gunslinging and that whoever wins that, and, you know, just being able to do that. And then the, the whole set piece and the switching areas and the roaming sandbox where you know you're riding on you're trying to get on a horse and build your character up and build the, the type of weapons you can use and the horses you can ride and the characters you can use that's cool it, until some random person who you don't know you're just walking along doing your own thing and he just shoots your ass but it's the old west shit happens so get used to it that is you know it's realistic and it pulls you into the experience i liked it it has its pluses and its minuses when you're new sucks but as you build experience and get familiar with it you enjoy it so that being said what would i have to give this score i'm gonna have to give it a four out of five badasses and the reason why between the graphical problems and the control problems which if you know me i never want to i don't think a gamer should ever have to fight with controls or camera camera was great controls were not controls had too many problems and you ended up falling up falling back on the same kind of mechanics just to save your butt. So I have to give it out a 4 out of 5. It is not a 5 out of 5. They should have fixed the soapiness. 
and they should have adjusted the camera uh, mechanics, the lock-on mechanics for when you are fighting zombies. I had two different scenarios for regular people, one scenario for zombies. All right. So that's four out of five badasses. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, you, you can always follow me on hiphopgamershow.com on Twitter. It's T underscore Hill Zero, or you can send me a friend request on PSN. It's T dash Hill. I just want to continue giving my shout out to Hip Hop Gamer. Thank you for all your amazing videos. You are dropping some knowledge, and I love the Mortal Kombat God of War thing. For all you haters, suck it. He brought that joint. He talked about it, and I seen the haters eat it. That's how journalists should be. They said, put a bug in the developer's ears, and that's how gamers get what they want. Real talk. He's a gamer. Brought it real. Another thing I want to give a shout out to, if you guys don't know, my boy Night Gen Hero, on his review for the Fight Lights Out, did the same thing. He talked about making the characters transparent. Guess what? They listened. They sent him emails. They fixed it. They're, they're fixing it. I think they already actually fixed it in one of their uh, firmware updates. That is exactly what should be happening. Developers listening to gamers who are journalists, not journalists who want to be gamers. Feel me? All right. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gamer Zero. I'm your host, T. Hill. As always, I just want to say thank you for all your support. I appreciate everything. Everything you guys do just makes me want to do it more. I got some great stuff for you coming up. I'm going to be doing my next game. I was going to do Gran Turismo, but I'm going to be dropping Dead Nation. That's the one I'm, I'm super pumped about. And plus, Gran Turismo is a huge game. And I just played a huge game, and I want to play a smaller game, then go into a uh, big game. Plus, HD PVR, 3D TV. I figured that does tribute to Gran Turismo 5. So that's all I've got for this episode of Gamer Zero. I hope you enjoyed. I'm your host, T. Heal. I'm out. Peace.